What's shaking, everybody? Welcome to another edition of K and A. I'm Catch. He's Anwar, and you're watching the Orange Bloods Texas Football Channel. Do us a solid like this video, please. Subscribe to this channel, please. Uh, notifications would be swell, and consider it consider it like a Christmas present to Anwar and I if you tell other people. Uh, about the channel, post a link to this video or anything that we've done this week. Uh, we love the word getting out for people who've not seen our videos before uh, to see them and love them and go from there. Uh, this video is brought to you by MyPerfectFranchise.net. If you're ready to change your life, man, I was thinking about this earlier today, like all the things I could be doing in my life. It's a hell of a thing to be able to choose your own path do your own thing, the thing that you love to do. And then every day you wake up and you have a little bit of a hop to your step because you love your job. If you hate your job right now and you want to start your own thing, that's what Andy over at MyPerfectFranchise.net does. He helps people get started with living out their dreams and being their own bosses and starting their own LLCs and their own company and businesses. So reach out to Andy. The phone number's on the screen. The email address is on the screen and take a step towards changing your life today, uh, which on war is kind of a sloppy little segue into a little game that we're going to play today called stay or go we're really talking about members of the Texas football team, mainly the older guys. I, I suppose there's another conversation to be had about players who aren't on the two deep that are young and still trying to find playing time blocked or whatever the, the case may be, we're focusing on the older guys today, guys that have decisions about whether or not they should either go to the NFL or maybe go to the portal, or should they stay exactly where they are for another year uh, and improve their NFL draft stock, or maybe get a little bit more out of what's in them as college football players um, than they've currently hit so far. So our, our, I'm going to be the game show host and I'll be tossing the questions to you, and then we'll go back and forth for that from there. So I guess I would ask Anwar, are you ready for a little game called Stay or Go? Well, first of all, thank you as a game show host. I'm glad that you don't have to kiss me on the show because uh, that would – you remember Richard Dawson was in Family Feud? Have you ever seen some of those videos of him? That dude. Oh, yeah. I'm glad there's no Richard, no Richard Dawson in you. All right. So we can see if there's a little. He would like Harvey totally as far square as up on the wives. Yeah. He was a total Mac Daddy, was, man. <laughs> well, and he, he'd be called a predator nowadays, Ken. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's let's be careful with that one. Uh, I don't know, man. He would square up on the wives, and the wives would lean in like they'd been waiting for it. Yeah, I don't think you do. You can't do that nowadays. <laughs> that 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 game show will get you canceled or arrested. I just want to know. I, I'm, I'm excited. Are we going to go portal guys first, or or, or potential NFL guys first? It's too. I think there's. I think we'll work our way through the positions. And there will just be a mixture of them all because okay. stay or go can mean just about anything with regards to the, uh, the leaving part of the discussion, the go. Uh, I want to okay. start out at running back, right? I don't think there's an upper class quarterback. Well, let's, I guess Hudson card stay yeah. or go. Go. And you know, and the reason why, if you're you're Hudson, <laughs> you, you've accomplished your mission. You wanted to get your your d diploma from the University of Texas. You're about to receive that. Uh, you wanted to have an opportunity to play at Texas. You had that opportunity, but you know now now that you've been able to, there's the other stuff that you want to do, which is you know play college football and have the opportunity to go into the NFL. So you know that's not going to happen here. Uh, you know, it's it's that that ship has passed. But he's able to get his diploma. He was able to say he played here. Steve Sarkeesian speaks highly of him on on the way out. And if you're Hudson, I think this is the moment that you've been waiting for. And I don't think any Texas fan would be upset with him. What about you? He, well, he improved his stock this year, right? I mean, he was a guy that had a bunch of recruiting accolades and 
people talked about his raw talent, but he hadn't played well. So if you're a coach who needs a starting quarterback and you're looking for guys in the portal, he's less of a project today than he would have been a year ago. He feels like a guy that could go in and immediately compete for a job somewhere. So I would go, but I would say that what the last year worked out really well for him. There will be guys that we will talk about where it's like, this didn't go perfectly this year, and maybe that's why we're having this conversation. Other than just taking the job outright and running with it, I don't know that Hudson Card could do much more other than took advantage of when he played, put some good film out there, and then didn't hurt himself. So, Catch, my only question uh, within that, because I think we both were kind of in the go uh, category with him, like the question is kind of where he should he go, and not necessarily a landing spot, but should he go like the Shane Bouchelle route where he says, okay, I'm going to go to SMU, I'm not going to have really anybody that I'm really going to quote-unquote compete against, or should he go to like a Power 5 place where you know – they're going to have, you know, th- you know, two other dudes that you got to go get. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's got to go somewhere, I think, where he knows he's that guy. But do you want him, like, non-Power 5, or do you want him back into Power 5? I think there are three tiers. And one of the tiers, if you are Hudson Card, you have to stay clear of. The first tier is mid-tier power programs. South Carolina last year – you know, with regards to Spencer Rattler. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a good place that's going to play good football, that's going to be competitive. Ole Miss, somebody like that. And obviously, if it's somebody bigger than that, then it's somebody bigger than that. Then there's the bottom feeder Power 5 programs, which let's call it the Casey Thompson rule. Don't go play Division I major, like Power 5 football, just for the sake of playing power five football. Mm -hmm. Don't put yourself in Colorado or Nebraska Mm -hmm. or one of these schools. that's just going to make you look like a loser. The other tier is the high end non-power five program. So for instance, let's say Cincinnati hired Tom Herman. Then you take a guy, then potentially Herman takes you at a Cincinnati You'll eventually be back in the the Big 12, but you'll also be playing AAC football. You know, you'll be you'll be winning 10 or 11 games. That would be the expectation. I think you, a Houston, you mentioned an SMU. You want a, a UTSA if mm-hmm. you looked at a situation and said, "Well, Frank Harris is gone. They mm. need a quarterback to take over a 10 and 2 team." Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got, you know what I mean? Like you're looking yeah, for programs like that. Mm-hmm. I think more so than like, well, I'll just go to Illinois. And it's like, oh, you went five and seven this year. And they blame you for not going right. to a bowl game when really there's so much more going on than just the quarterback position. So I think you ask a perfectly good question. And I think if I'm him, I'm looking for either one or three. I'm staying away from power five programs where it's, we're going to be really hard for me to look good. I'd rather look good at Houston or UTSA or SMU or Cincinnati. I would rather look good there than be playing for a four and eight team. And I'm getting lots of reps, but really what kind of reps am I getting? I'm getting my ass getting beat reps. Yeah, you're right. I mean, cause like, and we'll say this, I know we got a lot more to get into. I think you use Casey Thompson as the perfect example, you know, Casey, Casey probably looked better stock wise here at Texas than he did in Nebraska. Like he goes to Nebraska, and you go to yourself, eh, that's not that's not a draftable guy, you know. And, and you know, maybe he's a camp guy, but he's not draftable, as opposed to a Shane Bouchelle who goes to an SMU and has a great, you know, looks great over there. And you know, he's gonna sit in Kansas City for the rest of his life behind Mahomes and collect checks. Like it's a it's just a totally different, you know, mentality and a different path, but a smart one to say the least. Yeah. I mean, it worked out. Bouchelle went from a flame out at a power five school and has now picked a road that led him to the NFL. And ultimately that's where Hudson card wants to be. So, you know, there's something to be said for learning from other people's success, Bouchelle and bad choices and Thompson, Casey Thompson, if he's at Texas and is healthy, 
they're playing for a Big 12 championship this week. That's crazy. <laughs> so, you know, like that probably – I just don't know how – the guy that he was last year is better than the guy that Texas played with this year. So if you extrapolate that over 12 games, they're probably nine and three instead of eight and four, but they're playing in a big 12 championship game. Who knows? Maybe they're 10 and two uh, on war stay or go Keelan Robinson. Ooh, I would say stay, you know, what, you know, cause one, you've already left Alabama. Um, and so we're, we're, you're basically talking about, I guess, at that point, trying to go to the NFL yeah. as opposed to uh, staying in college. I, I would say stay. I don't, I, you know, right now, the best thing about Keelan Robinson is, is his special teams play, um, you, you know, kind of a, a, a gadget, kind of from a running back position. I, you know, how much is his stock will increase? I'm not quite sure. But I think I don't look I, – I, I still think the potential of doing more – you know, without Bijan and Roshan here, it's probably greater for him next season. Um, and I think that I think that benefits him to to stay and and potentially put up some stats. Maybe get maybe be one of those guys who's in the two deep catch. So yeah, for me, you know, maybe it's Brooks and Robinson with some Jaden Blue that's in there as well. I, I, he's a guy I definitely think we should stay. I'm a hundred percent in agreement with you. Although I will say. It might be that he's just a situational player for Steve Sarkeesian. And if you really felt like, hey, man, if I come back next year, my five plays a game and on special teams, if you think that, like, really, the next year is not going to help you, really. So it, you might just take your – it really just depends on what you want to get. I think if the mm-hmm. only thing that matters is the NFL, you could make a case that – unless he really starts being an every down back and he's starting to get a lot more reps, uh, which I think he should get. If How many reps a game? Let's take – look, forget about an offense that has B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson in it for just a second, right? Because mm-hmm. then you're like, well, you're taking carries away from those guys, and can you really do that? And a normal offense where you've got good players everywhere but not dominant ones – how many times on war would you get the ball to Keelan Robinson a game? In a normal offense? Yeah, we're like again, you're not taking Bijan off the field or taking uh, uh, you know some of Bijan's food off the plate and giving the ball to Keelan Robinson. I mean, he's getting it the way, about about the amount of times he probably should get it at this point. See, I think I'd give him the ball like between four and six times a game. Four and six? I mean. Yeah. That's all. That's. I mean, four, I, want, I want him catching the ball. I want him on a couple. I, I want him on the field. Yeah. I, I. In a normal offense, I think I'm gaining yards with that guy. I like. To, I like to see you know in a weird way. I know this probably would never happen. I like to see Keelan just as a slot guy and see what he can do. It will be interesting to see what can Texas can these coaches get something out of him. That's a great idea. C- could he play the slot? Yeah, if he could play wide receiver instead of running back, his value to this program takes off exponentially. Yeah, I mean that guy in your slot. I mean, like to me, then that's like you know we we talk about that kind of speed and elusiveness. Like, yeah, that to me is how do you get that guy on there? Um, You know, so that's I, I would to me that's what I would love to see is. Could he could he work out as a slot receiver? You know, like could you be the next video. Jordan Whittington? That that's like its own video. We we got to do a <laughs> okay, Robinson we'll, video, we'll like around Christmas time when things are really slow. We'll yeah. do a should he move to wide receiver video okay, and, okay. and see where that goes. Fair if enough. we move on to wide receiver, Anwar, this is the one that I think is really interesting, and it doesn't and and, I, and this and it doesn't matter that I think we kind of know what he wants to do. What should Jordan Whittington actually do? Stay or go? Well, I thought you were teasing to Xavier the way you were building that thing up. Um, I was, I was like, oh wait, that was a curveball. We're gonna make people watch this entire video before we get to Xavier. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, Jordan, if I'm Jordan, I I go. I, I and here's why if I'm Jordan, I go. First of all, you're able to do something. 
uh, that he has not been able to do since he's been in Texas and really since high school, which is complete a season. Like this is, this is, you talk about playing with house money, like Jordan Whittington got through a regular season. Like we, there's no need to knock on wood unless he plays in a bowl game. And then I'll start, I'll knock on wood just for the bowl game. Right. But he got, I'm just from a regular season. He got through it. He's a guy that's going to graduate. Um, and his goal is, you know, Jordan's goal and, you know, has always been to be in the NFL. You know, I don't know if he's going to get that much more of a workload next season where it's going to make that huge of a difference. And, you know, so if he's got his diploma, he's healthy, I, you know, and he's going to have great recommendations by Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian is going to speak very glowingly of him. Then I think Jordan's a guy that, you know, go ahead and get into the NFL camp. I don't necessarily see him as a guy that gets drafted. But, you know, I think he's one of those first guys as soon as the draft is over, uh, you know, that signs a, you know, a unrestricted free agent uh, kind of a contract, undrafted free agent, sorry, a contract and gets in with a team and sees what he does. So, yeah, for me, I, I say, Jordan, you've done it. You've done the damn thing. You've done enough. You've been through enough. Go ahead. Go pursue your dream. Yeah, I'm with you. And I think there will be a running general theme with a few of the guys that we'll bring up in a little bit. Sometimes you get to be tw- – well, you and I have had this conversation before. Sometimes you get to be 22, 23 years old, and you've been in college for four or five years. Sometimes you're just ready to go be a man. And if you're going to play football, you're going to want to get legitimately paid for it. And and sometimes you're just ready. Like, it's time. And I wonder with Jordan Whittington, if for him – He's just ready to done being a college football player. And, you know, I get that. When I was done with college, I was kind of ready to be done with college. So sometimes you just hit that moment in your life. And there will be a few of these guys that we're going to get to in just a second. That that also is, I think, as big of a question with their situation as anything else. As a matter of fact, I'll move on to another one. Offensive line, Christian Jones. Hmm. You know, I don't, I don't, I, I, if I'm him, I, I would stay, you know, I, you know, now does that mean he's probably likely in a, in a competition next season? Like sure. That I can definitely, that's, you know, that's, that's potentially on the table. You know, I don't see Christian Jones as a draftable guy, you know, at this I moment. Do. You do. I think Christian Jones is going to play in the NFL. At right tackle. No, I think he'll be a guy that probably will have some positional versatility. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's a auto. I don't think when I say he plays in the NFL that I am telling you that he's going to start in the NFL. But I've seen way worse offensive linemen than Christian Jones uh, play in the NFL because they're really big, can play a couple of different spots, and there just aren't a lot of. How many offensive linemen in the Big 12 this year do we truly see that were better than Christian Jones? And I don't mean that to hype up Christian Jones. I just mean to point out that really good offensive linemen are hard to find. Hence, only two have been drafted from this school since like the last decade plus. Yeah. So you think he's, you would, you would think. You know, next in April, Christian Jones is, is, is a day three guy. I think there's a good chance. He's a monster physically. He's played left tackle and right tackle. And in mm-hmm. all, we're talking about a guy that's made like, I don't know, I have to look it up, but 20, 30 starts as an offensive lineman at a major power five program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I think I'm not saying he definitely makes a roster. Yeah. I'm just saying in my head, I think he's going to play in the NFL and yeah. I I I and I think that he got a full season in. I would go if I were him. I don't know that he's coming back and getting much better than he already is. He's not improving his stock, but I think he's a draftable guy. I don't see him as a day one or a day two guy or even a high day three guy. But we get to like the fifth round. I could see a team re- a team's offensive lineman looking at Christian Jones and going. He's played left tackle. Forget about whether he's played well at left tackle. Sure. He's sure. played left tackle. He's played right tackle. We think he can play inside. He's got a bunch of snaps under his belt. I think he can be a little better. I, yeah. I 
Mark, I'm, I'm put me on record. I think Christian Jones is going to get drafted. Let me ask you this real quick on this on this one. If he came back, does he beat out like a Cam Williams? I think so, but I think that battle would make both of the. I think that battle would definitely make Cam Williams better because mm. he would be competing, and I think Christian Jones also because there's an actual competition might get slightly better, but not. I'm thinking about Alex's grading skill. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the like Kelvin Banks was hitting eighties. Mm-hmm. Kelvin Banks week in and week out was hitting between 76 and 78. I think he'd be more 78 and less 76s mm-hmm. if he came back for another year and potentially was competing for the job. I just don't know. Again, I don't think that changes his long-term outlook. I think he's reached his long-term outlook and I think he played well enough this season. I'm telling you, that guy looks so good in a uniform. Oh, he's a big guy now. There will be NFL teams that just look at his body of work and say, yeah, that guy, that guy we can do something with. Well, you know what, Catch? Here, here's what I'll say. And you, you, know, you know what I'm going to say because you've worked with me for nearly 10 years now. When I'm going to go back to my John Gruden, uh, you know, statement, yeah. right? I grew to Toby years ago when I covered the team. He said, there ain't a lot of uh, athletic 300-pound men walking the face of the earth. And when you see one of them, you got to draft them. So under that premise and what you're saying, you know what? You've, you, you've, you've taught me into it. Go ahead and go. And I think Kyle Flood would give him a good, like, report. to and the, the Internally, the coaches have always been more pro-Christian Jones than the fans and the media. Yeah. Hence – he was an easy starter this year when I think fans were like, get him off the field. Kyle Flood was like, no, that's my guy. And mm-hmm. I think he repaid that faith. Uh, okay, here's an interesting one. I genuinely don't fully know what the hell is going to happen here. Junior Angelow, stay or go. <sighs> not, not <laughs> and this is going, this is presumably going to a different college football program. This one is the this one is the tough one. I mean, it, this this is this is really really tough because he's coming off of in, off an injury, and my my gut says if you're coming off an injury, it's best to stay with the people who are invested in you than to go somewhere else where people don't really know you that well. So if you kind of, you know, gingerly and no one's, you know, they don't really know you know you, they're not invested in you. You haven't invested several years into the program. I don't know how patient they are with you. You know, you'd really have to go and ball out. For me, I would stay uh, or, or just because I'm coming off the injury. I just don't want to get caught up in, in some battle where people who just, they're not invested in me. I guess a lot of it comes down to just how healthy you are, right? Because you're right. You can't go to a new program and then just be walking around with a red injured shirt. And it, it, it when you hit the portal, especially when you're an older guy, it's like, I got to be good right away. I think you're right. The problem is, is I don't know if he has a place on the 2023 Texas Longhorns. Yeah. He's not taking that job back from Hayden Connor for a couple of different reasons. He was never really better than Hayden Connor. Hayden Connor's younger and Hayden Connor's bigger. And so one of the things that we've seen in the metamorphosis of this offensive line from season one to season two, he wants behemoths on his yeah. offensive line. And he had that this year. You had Kelvin Banks. Hayden Connor's a big dude. Um Obviously, Christian Jones is a big dude. That yeah. line's only going to get bigger as the, as the years go by. And the Junior's a smaller, injured, pretty good offensive lineman. And I don't know that that guy comes back and wins a job. So, in theory, he could come back and just be – and look, that'd be great for Texas. Yeah. I mean, if you're, you're good enough to have Junior Angelow as a reserve offensive lineman, then you're really starting to do some real good because <laughs> he's not a, he's a good player. He's yeah. just not like an all big 12 level player. So 
he's kind of damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. Because he might not have a place if he stays. Mm -hmm. He might not be healthy enough to maximize what he wants to do if he leaves. And I don't know what the best answer is. This is one of these where if he asks me, I would lay it out just like we have. And mm -hmm. I would say, which, which do you want to bank on the most? But I really think it's going to be a hard time for him to get a job back. Unless the, the caveat in this is there's been a lot of conversation about it. Go learn the center position and compete with Jake Majors. And at yeah. that point, if you get healthy, you've, you're suddenly a more diverse offensive lineman because if you go to the NFL, you can say, I can play three different positions. Everything inside, I can play. And, you know, you, you might I – can, I can close my eyes and see a world where Junior Angelau is a slight upgrade over Jake Majors. But Jake Majors is also a guy I think this coaching staff respects a lot, and you'd have to be really good – to take a guy that they've invested two years as a starter, as a starter in to take his job, you know, again, I don't know. I don't know the answer for junior juniors, a tough one. Yeah. I tell you what though, catch every, the whole time you're talking and we're having this video, I'm just thinking to myself, man, if you are Jeff trailer, these are the guys that you got to tell them, man, come here. You start here. We're going to compete for championships have and then you'll go to the NFL. Yeah, and go to the NFL. Like if I am Jeff Trailer, the you know the junior angle out that we you know we're, we're talking about Hudson Card. I'm rolling out the red carpet. I'm calling my my NIL guys. I'm like those guys that like if I'm Jeff Trailer, I'm thinking whatever A and M in Texas, those 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 guys, the elite guys who have to go somewhere. Those are the guys. I, I'm 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 having a hell of a program going forward. I'm just saying that. All right, we only got a, a handful of guys left. We'll run through these. Okay. A couple of these I think will be easy. Keandre Coburn, stay or go? Go. It's an easy go. Easy. easy. You had yeah, a really good season. season. Yeah. You're an older guy. Go start getting paid to play in the NFL. It's um, and, you know he's, he's 340 pounds. You know people are going to you know like that and. You know, look, we saw who was a who's the guy that got drafted by the Falcons um just a couple of years Take ago. Taquan Graham. Taquan Graham. You know, he's better than that. So well, I, I and was, I've talked to NFL guys who've said he's a big guy that can rush the passer a little bit. Like they're yeah. they as a situational player, I think he's a guy that's got a role in the league. He's gonna get drafted. Is he a day one or day two guy? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But if he went in round four, would not shock me because again. You're talking about a guy that started a lot of football. He's got a unique skill set. He's one of those guys that John Gruden talks about. I mean, he's not super tall, but he's a 340-pound guy that can move around and disrupt things, and they like guys like that. Love him. <laughs> Love Sometimes those guys get drafted way higher than we think they're going to be drafted because it's like, well, he's 340 pounds, and like he can rush the passer. It's like, yeah. oh, well, when you say it like that. <laughs> it's it's pretty simple. <laughs> what about Moro Ajomo? Let's stay on the defensive line. I want Moro to go so he can do more media interviews. So <laughs> just, nah, I, but, you know, all jokes aside, you know, no, I think Moro's a guy, I think he, he's done what he needs to do here. I don't think there's much else for him to accomplish on the college level. He's take one gram for me. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I also and, think Moro Ajomo will play in the NFL and he'll probably be like a sixth round draft choice. He'll be a guy that has a bunch of college starts, is a little bit athletic, has some positional versatility. Go. Yeah, 100% with him. Tavondre Sweat, <sighs> stay or go? And we should probably say, the expectations at this point is it looks like he didn't leave. He didn't walk on senior day. It mm -hmm. looks like he's staying on war. If I can go first and lob this over to you. Go for it. Go for it. I think of all of the guys that are listed to sweat looks best in a uniform. Mm -hmm. I think he had a lot of wild plays this season. Even if like once a game to sweat would make a play. 
and you'd go, God damn, Tavondre. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would go if I were him. That's what I would do. However, if someone says, hey, if you stay, we're going to pay you $500,000 a year for one year in NIL money, and you can be better showcased and be a frontline guy, that might like it. It seems to have, be, have done with him. That might make me at least think real hard about staying. Yeah, so to me, that to me, you know, when we start talking about NIL, and like I said, we, we doesn't – these are the kind of guys that would be late round picks that you could say, Hey, I got it. We got it here. Just stay here. I, cause for a guy like, for me, like Tavondre, unlike some of the other guys, I think Tavondre would be leaving some money on the table by going now, because I think his draft stock can increase. Like the other guys that we talked about, I don't necessarily think their, their stock increases that much. So yeah. Tavondre's could, um, you know, when he's the kind of maybe centerpiece, of this defensive line, especially the interior, I, I, you know, I, I like that. So, uh, yeah, you know, for me, I, 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 if I'm him, I stay. I think you, you, you make sure he's okay from an NL perspective, and then you know he goes out and has a good year, and then maybe builds himself into that, you know, potential day two pick is what you know you're kind of hoping for. I just wonder. I mean, he's gonna. It looks like he's gonna stay. So, like, what you and I talk about right this second doesn't really matter. I wonder if he had a guy in his ear, though, saying, dude, an agent, if you will, saying, you really could be a second or third round guy if you come out. Like, you're a, you're a monster physically. You're going to, we think you're going to test real well. Like, your stock, you know, because we are constantly, you and I, talking about football players who are told that their NFL stock is higher than it really is. Tavondre is a guy that could literally have a guy whispering sweet nothings in his ear, and I could understand why he might want to believe it. And yet, it mm-hmm. looks like he's going to stick around and play another year of college ball. Of all the guys we're talking about, Tavondre is a guy that, to me, you could see a weaselly NFL agent convincing sure. him, "Yeah, you're man. gonna go on day two." <sighs> I do, those guys do it all the time, man. <laughs> 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 You know, the, the worst part, I'm telling you, and this, and this is how you know you'll see it because this is the worst thing. The, 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 wor- the worst things I ever see is when they show the list catch of underclassmen that declare for the draft. And then after the draft, they showed the list of the underclassmen who weren't drafted. And I'm just like, you were all the guys that were lied to. Yeah. Like, this is the list. All, all 150 of you, 200 of you that are on this list who that agent told you this and that, you were the lied to group. And now you're upside down like $50,000 because you still owe that agent a bunch of money for workouts <laughs> and stuff like that. All, All right. right. The final portal guy that, or not portal, but stay or go guy to talk about is Xavier Worthy. Mm. We I, got one. I got another one that you skipped over. Who did I skip over? I got a good one. Okay. Malik Murphy. Ooh, well, I have really have only focused on older guys. Okay, okay, okay. Like, okay. I mean, Malik Murphy fits into a category of guys like Casey Kane and, mm-hmm. you know, all, all of the redshirt fl- freshmen, the <laughs> the Isaac Pearsons and the DJ Harris's and the Prince Dorbas of the world. I think there's a separate category of stay Ooh. or go. So separate video, separate yes. video. A part two, if this video does anything at all. <laughs> if it doesn't. <laughs> the hell is part two, unless we get to, you know, December and we're just fiending for some sort of original content. Okay. Now, let's focus this last one on Xavier. All right. Because Malik Murphy's his own video. I feel like we do our own Xavier video right now. People will riot. So let's just keep him embedded in this particular stay or go segment. And I'll just ask you again, Xavier worthy (laughs) stay or go. I'm going to talk this out. Okay. Cause this is, this is a tough one for me because my, my gut says stay, right? Like my, my initial gut says stay like why? And I'm like, cause I say to myself, well, you know, he, he, you know, he still has Sarkeesian, you know, I think when you look 
with NFL scouts and really NFL teams, they, they look at they look at film. You know, they judge film and they judge film sometimes a little bit more than the stats. I think we judge the stats, but they look at the film, you know, and they catch how many times have you seen guys drafted in third or fourth round? They don't have amazing stats. You know, they no. don't, but they, they've they got the film that shows folks that they can do and get things done in the NFL that, you know, that you want to get done. Like, I forget who is this, like, backup uh, running back at the that at Florida that's been doing so great uh, in the NFL. But so if he's got – his film probably looks good to, to, a, to an NFL teams where he's probably still in line. But, you know, of course, the stats don't help. Um and then there's, a, you know, but there's a part that says go because it seems like there's a fractured relationship maybe with Xavier and, and, and maybe the fan base a little bit. But it seems to be a lot of understanding. And, and so and then the fan base is not just fans, but it also reflects in NIL as well, like because people who cut NIL checks are fans. Right. So you just can't act like it's the guy in the basement, you know, who's just, you know, where's this UT stuff? Like there's also the person who, you know, flies on a private jet. He's a fan or she is a fan as well. So my, I I guess I'll, I'll, as I think it out and talk it out, I'll say go just so he can be happy somewhere else. Um, and maybe, you know, Texas can move on in, in another realm. He doesn't seem happy if he's scrapping all his UT stuff off his Instagram. Like, you know, as a guy who's been divorced a couple of times, that's usually what you do when you're about ready for a breakup. You know, you get rid of all those old pictures. No need to have those wedding pictures from about, you know, five, six years ago. We're, we're just going to get rid of all that. So I would say go only because, he, you know, he's clearly frustrated. and not quite sure it's going to get better uh, for him. But there was a part of me that still thinks like fit, fit, oh, things are so fickle and you can make things work. You know, people get mad in the moment, uh, but then they figure out how to make things work and everything kind of smooths over and it's OK. But it's, it's stay or go. So I have to say go. Before I give my yeah. final answer to the to, to the stay or go part of this. Let me just throw a couple of clarifying remarks out there. I think Xavier Worthy is the second most talented wide receiver that these eyes have. I'm not saying best. I'm saying talented. He and Roy Williams, to me, are the most talented wide receivers that I've ever seen come through the University of Texas. We're talking about a legit, I think, 10-3, 10-400 meter guy, which could translate to 4-3-ish on a 40 yard dash, whenever he goes off to the NFL, he ain't running four, four, in my opinion, like it's somewhere sub four, four, he's an elite level route runner. He gets in. I mean, and when I say elite level route runner, I had someone from the university, I had someone from the football staff reach out to me last week and say, and he runs every route on the route tree at an incredible speed. He is a legit route runner. No player in the history of the program through two seasons has made more plays in their first two seasons at receiver than Xavier Worthy has. When it comes to touchdowns, he leaves everybody in their dust. I think if you're Texas and we're just talking about football, you almost can't replace that guy. You can find guys that can maybe even get the stats. I don't know. Like, Guys in the Steve Sarkeesian offense are going to have numbers. But I think from just a physical prospect some standpoint, he is the most, along with Roy Williams, one of the two most unique wide receiver talents that Texas has ever had. And I think he would do well to stay here because I do think next year, I think on war, you're right. They're going to look at the film and they're going to go, this dude is always open. Are we going to punish him because the quarterback couldn't throw the ball deep? He's doing – The hard part, what NFL scouts want in receivers are guys that can get open. Can you get open? Because in the NFL, they're putting DBs on you who are sensational. It is hard to get open in the NFL. And when you find a receiver that beats man coverage, any kind of coverage, press coverage, they just get open, they're worth their weight in gold. 
Yeah. And I think they're gonna, NFL guys are going to look at Xavier Worthy and think that guy's going to get open and he can – Devontae Smith – not Devontae Smith, but Jalen Waddell, our offense potentially from a speed and separation standpoint. I say all of that because on where you brought up relationships, Texas and Xavier Worthy, knowing what we know about everything that's going on, a lot of stuff we can't talk about on a YouTube video. It's like a relationship where the guy cheats on the girl, but they stay together. A year ago, Xavier going to the portal and the way all of that happened and the way Texas thought they had him taken care of and right after they thought they had him taken care of, he's in the portal and then they got to renegotiate and try to get him taken care of from an NIL standpoint, which they thought they had already done. It was a little bit like cheating, I think, from some people on the Texas side of the perspective. They've never quite forgiven how or forgot how that played out. I don't think they want to do it again. I think the last thing they would want to hear is Xavier say, hey, is there a way for me to make more in NIL? You've also got a staff that just wants a guy who's either in or out. The, the, the thing about Xavier that makes me lean towards go is if Anwar, I said, we buy or sell, we get to June without anything else happening with Xavier Worthy. Just football for him. No, he might enter the portal later on in the year or anything. Buy or sell. Xavier just, after his decision, if he stays, he's just a football player and the coaches never have to worry about high maintenance with him ever again. Well, I guess what's the... I, I mean, I could buy it because I don't know what he's really done that's been high maintenance, you know, throughout. But going into the portal and telling Texas officials, like NIL people, that they had a deal and then ending up in the portal and that deal having to be reworked when there was a handshake kind of agreement, that that was that left a mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you're, you're saying what would occur after – they came to like an agreement, like at, for instance, after they came to that agreement, then I think we haven't really seen much from an Xavier from like a disruption standpoint since then. But I think saying, they lack trust in Xavier. Yeah, but you asked me what would go wrong, and and so I'm saying, did and I'm I'm saying I don't know if it, I'm I'm saying I don't think anything would go wrong if if you say he's still here in June. Well, I I think in this world in this context coming and asking for more money in February, March, April, May, whenever, I think that would be viewed as, you know, it doesn't not doesn't fit the traditional what word, like I think definition of what could go wrong. But I think in the estimation of some people's eyes on the Texas side of things, they just want Xavier Worthy to focus on football and they don't want to behind the scenes have to do what they've already done there to keep him in the first place. Cause look, when you and I were doing videos last year, before the, the, the portal situation happened, we talked a lot about God, the fan base would melt. Like people would stop watching college football. If Xavier worthy declared into the, put himself into the portal and went to a USC after the freshman season that he just had. And so it was seen as a worst case scenario a year ago at this time. And I just get the sense that I said, like you said, I just think there's a relationship thing there that exists, that there is a part of me that thinks it might be better for, for them to go their separate ways for a number of reasons. I am surprised at the weirdness of the relationship that exists in general. And I'm surprised that people inside the program and the football department aren't a little more. I, I think it's even probably split there. I think some guys are like, we can't live without this guy. He's incredible. And I think there are other people that are like, we'll find some other receivers. We just need guys 
that this stops happening because you like that we're even having this conversation about Xavier is a continuation of what happened last summer. I think some would say, is he ever happy? And I don't know that that's fair or not, but I think the perception exists. Yeah. I think there's, I think there's a little bit of unfairness and in the, in the, I think there's a little bitterness within the conversation um, because it was uh, it was in the spring when this whole thing kind of uh, occurred. But Xavier wasn't the only guy that was looking for, you know, to, to come up. Right. He wasn't the only guy that was saying, put my name in the portal and since you have like 48 hours to figure something out from an NIL perspective where you go. Um, I, but I think the the results of the season and then, you know, it coupled with, you know, now he becomes kind of the guy that they point to kind of adds to that because the other guys who did okay from a defensive standpoint, right? No one's upset with that portion of it, even though those guys, you know, kind of made the same threat or, you know, or, or negotiated or whatever term that you want to use. So I get it, but so this is what, so this is what I'm saying. This is my overall point. If, if these, if everyone wants to work it out, this is what I believe. If anyone says, you know what? Let's just sit down and find a way to work this thing out here in, as we record this in November, uh, late November, early December. And then they decided like, this is what it's going to happen. Then I think the deal is the deal. And I think Xavier probably just goes and goes about his business for the rest of, you know, 2023. The problem is, I don't know if based off the information that we're hearing, if that can be done at this point, just because of where the relationship is and because it does seem fractured, I'm just saying that I think that if everyone came to some sort of terms and agreement, I think they would be fine going forward only because uh, when they came to with all a lot of players were doing what Xavier did in the spring, you know, you never heard a peep of them after that. I have no issue letting that be the final word on this subject. Do us a solid. Like this video. If you've watched it for nearly 50 minutes, you know, that probably deserves a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. And by all means, contact Andy over at MyPerfectFranchise.net, the sponsor of KNA. Should you want to talk to somebody who can give you advice on how to start your own business, and start being your own boss, and start living the life that you have always wanted to live a little bit of scheduling notes we've got karen tonight on uh on his new show over on the channel it'll be his third show he's got a special get a former heisman winner i don't want to completely let the cat out of the bag but i'll tease it a little bit a former heisman winner joins karen's show tonight on has got the drunk uncle tomorrow night we've got the modcast we've got all of our usual content uh that you can expect during the week so stay tuned. But for now, for Anwar and myself and our matching polo gear, you guys have a great rest of the day. Take care of each other. Later.